Highest in honour after the House of the Kings were the Lords of Andunie, for they were of the line of Elros, being descended from Silmarien, daughter of Tar Elendil, the fourth king of Numenor. And these lords were loyal to the kings, and revered them, and the Lord of Andunie was ever among the chief counsellors of the Scepter. Yet also from the beginning they bore especial love to the Eldar, and reverence for the Valar, and as the shadow grew they aided the faithful as they could. But for long they did not declare themselves openly, and sought rather to amend the hearts of the Lords of the Scepter with wiser counsels. Hello Tolkien geeks! This video is part of my playlist series on the island state of Numenor, the great superpower of Middle-earth's Second Age. Make sure to like the video and please do subscribe to Voice of Geekdom if you've not already done so. During the reign of Tar Elendil, the fourth king of Numenor, who ruled from the year 590 of the Second Age, the first ships travelled back to Middle-earth, led by the captain of the king's ships, Veantur, who met Gil-galad there and became a hero of the Numenorian people upon his return. His achievement ushered in an age of exploration for Numenor, particularly after Tar Elendil's grandson, Tar Aldarion, took the scepter later on. We'll get into his storyline in more detail in subsequent videos in this series. The other event of major note during Tar Elendil's reign was the establishment of the line of the Lords of Andunie, which is the topic of today's video. In the beginning, and for many years afterwards, the kings of Numenor followed the traditions which were ingrained into them, presumably, by the High Kings of the Noldor, the elven kings of the line of Fingolfin, whom many of the ancestors of the men of Numenor served under during the Wars of Beleriand in the First Age. This meant that the kings of Numenor followed their example when it came to organising the matter of succession, and thus practised the tradition of agnatic primogeniture, which in practice meant that the eldest male in the line of succession would always inherit the scepter first, even over an older daughter of an incumbent monarch. This law will change fairly soon, and we'll see the consequences of that change in future videos. What all of this means is that when it became time for Tar Elendil to formally appoint his successor, the scepter passed to his son, Irimon, when it might have otherwise passed to Irimon's elder sister, Silmarien, and so she and her descendants never held the throne of Numenor. Irimon became known as Tar Meneldur, who was the fifth king and the father of Aldarion, the famous mariner who befriended Gilgalad and the elves of Lindon. Earlier in her father's reign, Silmarien had married a man named Elatan of Andunie, who was a nobleman in the western Andustar region of Numenor. Though she was passed over for the rulership of the island, Tar Elendil gave great honour to his eldest daughter when he bequeathed the Ring of Barahir to her the same ring which Finrod Felagun had received from Beren during his quest of the Silmaril in the First Age. It was because of this choice that the ring survived the downfall of Numenor, and was able to be passed down by the kings of Arnor, and then by the chieftains of the Dúnedain, and eventually inherited by Aragorn during the War of the Ring. More importantly, Tar Elendil also appointed the son of Silmarien and Elatan, who was named Volondil, to be the first Lord of Andunie, which began a new dynasty upon the island, an offshoot of the royal family. 
The Lords of Andunier became an important political force in Numenor, serving on the Council of the Scepter and advising the monarch. Later on, the Lords of Andunier remained faithful to the Valar and secret friends of the Elves throughout all the days of Numenor's shadow, when the influence of Sauron had corrupted the rest of their society. The Lords of Andunier became the most recognisable faces of the faction known as the Faithful, who opposed the King's Men during the Civil War. Centuries later, Armandil, the father of Elendil the Tall and grandfather to Isildur and Anarion, will become the 18th and final Lord of Andunier. Armandil was a friend and advisor to Arpharazon, the last king of Numenor, until Arpharazon was corrupted by Sauron's will. Amandil was lost to the Numenorean people when he took it upon himself to break the ban of the Valar himself in order to sail west to seek aid from Manwë, and warn the Valar of Arpharazon's plan to attack Aman itself. Amandil was never seen again, and Numenor was destroyed shortly afterward as a response to Arpharazon's attempted invasion. The legacy of the Lords of Andunier will survive when Amandil's son Elendil will escape the destruction of Numenor and establish the realms in exile in Middle-earth. All of the long line of kings, right down to Aragorn himself, is descended from Elros through the line of Silmarien and the Lords of Andunier, rather than through the later kings of the island. It's an interesting thought experiment to wonder what might have happened if Silmarien had ruled instead of Tar Meneldur. Some have speculated that this moment was the real beginning of the issues that eventually led to the Numenorean civil war, and ultimately the downfall. None can say what the authorial intent behind the change to the law of succession really was. What do you think? Would Silmarion's line have stayed faithful forever, had the Scepter passed to her instead of her brother? In the next couple of videos in my Numenor Explored playlist, we will take a look at the story of Aldarion the Mariner, his friendship with Gil-galad, as well as his relationship with his wife Erendis, and the fallout from their bitter estrangement.